Jordan. <laughs> okay, what are you making? I am making uh, Cross Bronx Expressway. And what's that? That is um, actually uh, Rocky Road with oh. a, a little change up. Four quarts of blend, the dairy, uh, cocoa, which you measured out for me, the vanilla, 16 ounces of trail mix, and mini marshmallows as it's coming out. Ooh, trail mix. Yeah. I can't. Was it, was it, was it, was it name of that Isn't that funny? That's the funniest thing. People come in here, we're going to get free ice cream. It's going to be great. We love it. And then by the end of the day, hey, who wants to make another flavor? Uh, uh, no, no, please, no more. Steve, what was the name of that again? Cross Bronx Expressway. Cross Bronx Expressway. Cross Bronx. Cross Bronx. Cross Bronx. Cross Bronx. Cross Bronx. PB&J, ready for you. I drove it every day. It's six miles. It takes 45 minutes to go six miles. I used to see the same people. They'd be sitting there reading the, the, the New York Post on their lap while we would just crawl along. Yeah. You know, and we had to get your mic off you. Oh, right now? Yes. We're gonna... There's two of them. You need covers, right? Wids? We'll have to put these in the freezer for the moment while you and I make the next flavor. Jeff, it's been fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Yeah, Cross Bronx Expressway, otherwise known as Rocky Road. It's got a lot of, it's got a lot of potholes. But you put that on the menu board, it's going to take up a whole lot. Yeah, it is. You just put CVX. <laughs> you know, one flavor. It came up the other day that you want to also make of mine um, is called NYPD. New York Police Department, NYPD. It's coffee and donuts. And it's great. And wherever you live, if you want to get in good with your local towns, people, and, you know, uh, just have a wonderful life, you just call it whatever your police department is. If you're in L.A., it's LAPD. Houston's HPD. Uh, Miami, it, it just, it's perfect. You making that today? No. Oh, okay. But I can tell you it's real easy. Uh, I make a strong coffee. Uh, I use, I, I, I'm a coffee snob. Uh, 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 that's the only thing I'm a snob about is coffee. I love coffee. I now only bring, drink Black Rifle. Black Rifle coffee, is, I mean, hair on your spleen. It's great. Uh, yeah, the, the, the strongest one's called Murdered Out. And uh, I drink the Murdered Out. Uh, a little lesser than that is Beyond, uh, Beyond Black is another strong coffee. So you use that to make the ice cream? You can. I, no, I guess that was my point. I mean, this is, this is really just awful, but let me see if I have any. But I don't use that wonderful coffee. I use horrible, horrible, would never drink it. Worse, Taster's Choice. Yeah, I would never drink a cup of Taster's Choice. But the freeze-dried crystals dissolve in the ice cream and it's fantastic. You can get a really strong flavor. <clears throat> I made it, first time I made it, my sister had just moved down her, here, she and her husband from Chicago, and I said, don't take my ice cream. I, I wasn't being mean about it, but I just wanted to warn her because I knew the coffee was in there. I said, don't take my ice cream. I don't see her for three days. When I see her, her eyes are down like this. And I said, what the hell happened to you? She said, I took a pint of your ice cream and I ate the whole thing at 11 at night. I've been up for three days. <laughs> Serves you right. <laughs> so now I make a decaf. And it's great. And then the donuts, uh, I just go, I went to Dunkin' Donuts and bought donuts. And I just broke them up into pieces and threw them as it was coming out. Yeah, so they would stay whole. And, and that's it. But like the Cross Bronx Expressway, you call something NYPD or HPD, um, uh, call it Bookham Dano, you know, and it'll get attention. It's, it's kind of fun. And you can do the same thing in Italian ice, too, uh, using uh, Taster's Choice. Oh, the Taster's Choice, there's one warning. When you're pouring it into the machine, you got to watch out for the 25 cents off coupon because it's in there and it's going right into the machine. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm telling you this because I've done it. People say, I had a scoop of your ice cream. It kind of tasted like car paper. And I said, nah, it's, it's just your taste buds. <laughs> Are you ready? I am. I left my copy in the office. Though. Well, you can have mine. Didn't know what was going on. Uh, right Christy, now. our sales manager, is going to assist me. Christy, the one who's the only employee who has a machine at home. 
<laughs> you know, I don't get I don't get one. <laughs> I get nervous in front of people. I do it all day long by myself, but when I get in front of people, it's nerve wracking. All right, so everybody ask her a lot of tough questions. Really yeah. scared the heck out of her. <laughs> all right, so I'll pour this in. Whoa! Maybe I should have let you pour it in, Christy. And I'm blocking both cameras, right, Mike? Yes, you are. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> so you didn't see me spill it. It just looks like residue from another flavor. Okay, Christy, first hard question. Yes. Tampa Bay or... Who's on first? <laughs> Who you got again? Am I for Tampa Bay? Yeah. Bucks? Lightning? What are we talking about? Football. Football. Uh, I don't really watch football. Oh, <laughs> Oh, Green Bay. You didn't yeah. ask me. I'm for the Jets. <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't won anything in 20 years. 20. But I am a member of the Jets Parking and Chowder Society. Oh, wow. We used to get together at Shea Stadium, and someone would bring this five gallon pail of uh, 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 New England clam chowder, and we'd sit there eating clam chowder as an excuse to drink beer. Well, and for everything associated with football, an excuse to drink beer. Well, if you talk basketball, that's a different story. OKC Thunder, Houston Rockets, you know, Magic. I know basketball. And now you're going to get to know uh, chocolate. Okay. This is Jeff's fancy Giadelli chocolate, uh -huh. uh, which is excellent. Uh, another one that I use, and you'll see it on my website, is uh, Forbes chocolate. You can just pour that right in, please. Machine. And three ounces of vanilla. Okay. The vanilla is around here somewhere. Ooh. Um, that completely just popped. This is Benjamin P. Forbes, or they're also a hundred-year-old company, and uh, they make only chocolate and chocolate chips. And it's excellent, excellent product. This is ready to go in the packet. They have double dark, um, and I'll tell you a little secret about dark chocolate and double dark chocolate. It's the same stuff, only with some natural food coloring added to it to make it darker. Because as you can see from that package, I mean, you know this is a real product because chocolate is red. Uh, it's not black in color, it's red. Uh, so that's got a, a red hue to it, and this is a, a double dark. I'll pass this around. But uh, they're great people, and um, they're in Cleveland, Ohio, and I've been dealing with them for a long time. And then Jeff's uh, Giadelli is also excellent, but my, my favorite is this one. Do you want your vanilla in now, too? Please. And... Oh, I, I don't do it Jeff's way. He's just burning electricity. See, now that he's gone, we can do the real stuff. <laughs> I can tell you the truth. I'm telling you, the man's wrong on everything. That's why we get along so well. He teaches me a lot, really. You know, because I'm making ice cream maybe once every two or three months, and, and Jeff's done it, you know, every day since 2008 when he sat in the back. So he, he, he excuse me? What kind of vanilla? Oh, I use um, uh, Lockhead vanilla, and I'll talk to, about that for a second. Do you know where that is? Yeah. Jeff, the cheap It's not an extract, right? This is an extract. There, there's no other way to get vanilla okay. but an extract. Uh, this is Lockhead. It's a family business again. Um, and um, this is number, you want to write the Lockhead is spelled L-O-C-H-H-E-A-D. Lock, L-O-C-H-H-E-A-D, vanilla. And this is flavor number 103A is an alpha. Uh, that's important because vanilla went, uh, let's see, we can start that up on super premium. Um, you want me to start the freeze? Yeah. Hmm? Lockhead, Lockhead vanilla flavor number 103A. Uh, that's important. Vanilla used to be about $100 uh, a gallon uh, for a pure vanilla. And then uh, Madagascar and the other countries that produce vanilla figured out that the number one user of vanilla in the world is America, and that Americans would pay anything for their vanilla ice cream. And so they started claiming year after year, it got really old after about 10 years, that they had a monsoon and it wiped out the crop. Um, well, that may or may not be true. 
Uh, but the thing is, vanilla went up to about $700 a gallon. It went from the cheapest ice cream to make to be the most expensive. Um, so Lockhead, to take care of that, uh, is still got a $700 vanilla, pure vanilla, but this is an all-natural vanilla. Uh, so all the, everything in here is all-natural, um, and it, it makes the best vanilla that I've ever had. And I can claim it's all-natural. And it's about $115 a gallon. So, and a gallon lasts a long time. So it's really a, a, a really good deal, relatively speaking. How much did you add to your machine? You didn't do the one ounce per quart. Jeff uses one ounce per quart, uh, which and if I'm making vanilla ice cream, I will do. Everything else, I look at the flavor and I say, how important is it to the flavor? So the predominant flavor here is chocolate. So adding vanilla will enhance it, but it's not the main, the main thing we're going for. So um, I put in, you put in three ounces of vanilla. Uh, Jeff would have put in um, four or five. Uh, so it's a happy medium. Uh, but vanilla is important. Um, uh, up in New York, uh, there's a franchise that's been around since I was a kid called Carvel. And Tom Carvel was a crotchety old man, hated my father and my uncle because Uncle, uh, uncle June, Emery Thompson Jr., and my father, Ted, threw him out of the factory in 1950. He's a, he's a Greek, Greek guy, and he comes in, and there's a story about him, how he came from Wisconsin in his old beat-up truck, which broke down on the side of the road in Harrison, New York, and that's where he opened his store. It's true. And he just got meaner over time. And so he's got a plan for a specific machine, and he brings it into my father and my uncle and says, I'll tell you what, you build me, he's only got this truck, you build this machine for me, and I'll, I'll take two of them, and if I like him, I'll pay for him. And they, they, they looked at each other and said, get out. And he went on to build 1,100 stores. So my father taught me at an early age, I think maybe I was one and a half, he said, son, when someone, some crazy Greek comes into the store and tells you that he wants you to build him two machines for free and he'll pay you if you like him, you sit down with him, you analyze it, you discuss it, and then you throw him the hell out. And so I learned from that. I, I, I listened first. But Tom Carvel used to come into the booth and tell me at trade shows and tell me how much he disliked my father and my uncle. But he liked me for some reason. And he'd come with two bodyguards. Big, big bodyguards. And he would always tell me that um, he would send in, and there was a point to the story. My stories usually eventually get around to a point. Uh, the point was vanilla. He said, I always have my spies, you know, you know, the th two thugs. Um, I always have my spies go to stores and taste the vanilla because vanilla is the cheapest ice cream to make and if they're cheating on the villa, vanilla, as he said, you can be darn sure they're cheating on the maple walnut. So I used to sell these machines illegally to Carvel stores. They'd build false walls. One guy built a tall filing cabinet with a hook at the top and a block and tackle. You know, they would, and I would tell the guys, the spies are only going to taste your vanilla, so make all your other flavors on my machine and just make the vanilla on the Carvel machine. <laughs> and and the, old, the old buzzard never knew it. Um, so, yes. So, uh, is it in here? I didn't see it. I'll the, go find it. There's one bag uh, in my office. Okay. Um, so vanilla is really important. As an ice cream maker, or just someone who loves ice cream, I too go into your stores and I taste the vanilla. Because Tom Carvel was right. If you're cheating on the vanilla, you're not making very well on the more expensive flavors. So make a great vanilla. Tom Carvel used to advertise everything he ever owned. He had moon pies and bomb pops and fudgy the whale. and <clears throat> He had all the signs up there in the store. And you'd look in, you'd walk into the store, and you're looking in, you're so overwhelmed, you'd say, um, give me a vanilla soft ice cream. Yeah, and that's, that's what you would buy, because it was just, the, the signs are so well overdone. Go for it. It's pretty cool. What is it? You know, we'll go in? Mm -mm. Well, we'll find a way. Let me get the... I'll show you a trick. Just shake it in. You gotta, I gotta get a container. Okay. I know your tricks. All right. I don't even have. I still have to do. 
Ready? First, just pour it in here and, and see how it goes. See if it will go in. Um, we've let the ice cream go. We want to add the nuts and cookies and stuff, but we've let it go a little too long. So as Jeff said, they're all going to clog up in the center. So what you do is you just uh, no. open the gate momentarily, uh, halfway, up, down, just like that. It creates a momentary hole, and then they'll shoot into the back of the machine and disperse all the way around. So that's, that's the way you can get it. If we don't get it, we'll just shake them in as it's coming out. Um, You're not going to... We're going to extract too much. Okay. So we'll put them as, as it's coming out. Yep. And um, what was I going to say? If you do put nuts in, um, let, let's use um, pecans or pecans. Pecans are expensive. So if the recipe calls for uh, a certain amount of pecans and you're going to put them in the machine, the machine is going to take whole pecans, which are expensive, and break them into quarters, which is just where we want it. We don't want somebody to have a whole big pecan. We want pieces. So the question then is, why buy you know, $40 uh, uh, whole pecans to put them into a machine that's going to turn them into $15 pieces? Just buy the $15 pieces and use that in the machine. Same quality, it's just they want the whole pecans to put on a nice dessert or something, and we just want it for the flavor. So buy the cheaper pecans, and uh, it, they'll work just as well, and they won't break up any further than quarter pieces. Another thing Steve always really talks about too is after the holidays, Christmas, Valentine's Day, Easter, all of that candy goes on clearance. You're not putting the wrappers in the machine. Take that, stick it in the freezer, and when you have a flavor you want to make, you know, whether it's the chocolate bunnies, you can save the candy canes that go on clearance for a quarter a box. You always have those, and they'll freeze forever in your hardening one. So that's another big cost saver, too. Jeff had a big two-and-a-half-gallon tub of um, Reese's Pieces was it, or Mars Candy. What was it? You mean the, the mini chips? Yes. Yeah. What was that? Just mini chips or the Heath bars. Yeah, oh, the, the Heath, the Heath, the Heath ground, chunks. Ground up yeah. Heath chunks. And uh, it's been a year since we've done this. And so little by little, we grab these little Italian ice cups. <laughs> and no one's looking around. And you take a, a scoop of it, four ounces, and take it back to your desk. <laughs> Jeff finally comes in to check inventory. And he says, I'm, I'm not finding uh, the, uh, the Heath pieces except for about one inch. And I said, um, hey, gee, I don't know. But I'll tell you what, I'll buy some new ones. No problem. Just send me the bill. And he just kind of looks at me like, you're spending money. <laughs> you know, so he knew we'd been eating them. So it's a great idea to have five pounds in the freezer, but you know that five pounds is also going right here. It's a, it's a worry. Um, so how do we look here? Pretty full. We've been eight minutes and 25 seconds. But um, again, if vanilla is going to take eight minutes, some flavors will take longer because of the higher sugar content. The cocoa... Uh, which is blended with sugar, so you can put it right in the machine, is going to raise the sugar level. So, so that's going to raise the freezing time of the ice cream. So you can say on average ice cream is eight minutes, but it's actually going to be maybe nine or ten minutes uh, for certain flavors. You put alcohol in like Jeff does, and you can be up to about 12 minutes or so. So let me get a gelato pan. I think I got be... one right here. Oh, good. Okay. Now, since we didn't get these in the machine, Christy, we're both going to have to double time it. Got it. Morning. That's just about ready. So Christy will shake in the marshmallows, and I'll shake in... I'll shake in the um, trail mix. Now, how heavy are you wanting these marshmallows? Uh, I can go a lot? A lot. Can, all right. You have a spatula? Boy, this is why you need women. You don't clean nothing. No, we don't clean up. We call we call Andy. <laughs> Very true. Andy, help. Okay, that cuts off nicely. Um, you when you're ready. I'm trying to at least get some water off. Here you go. So I'm gonna. Uh, Do you want I'm, no, I'm just gonna drop my hand. So I'm gonna. Um, turn off the refrigeration, and instead of opening it all the way, in fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna act like I'm doing pints, and I'm gonna slow it down. That'll make it come out slower and easier to work with. So, yeah, cool, huh? 
Every once in a while, usually about every six years, I say something intelligent. It's, it's not that often. <laughs> so you can fill pints right at the machine if you want. Keep coming. I may have to get the second. Whoops. All right, I'll go get the second. What do you call it? Infinite what controls? Infinite overrun control. That's great. That's a real name? That, yeah, I, I made it up. I mean, I, I could have done something better. This was supposed to be the 360, meaning that it can do anything. But I did a misprint when we sent it off to Underwriters Laboratories, who charges $10,000 just to change uh, a letter, because I had put 350. And I wasn't going to spend ten thousand dollars to switch it to three sixty, so it's the three fifty. I'll be right back. Got to get more trail mix. Okay, dokie. That's ice cream, uh, crispy or gelato. This is super premium. Super premium. Super premium is about one hundred sixty-five RPMs. Gelato is about one hundred forty. So this is not going to be as thick as a gelato would be. Well, I don't need that now. Ready? Yep. So remember, we said this is a six quart machine. We've already pulled out six liters, which is more than six quarts. I feel like a flower girl at a wedding. <laughs> you throw marshmallows at weddings? Well, you can't that's, throw rice that's, anymore. That's unique. Why not? Because the birds, because it's dry rice, the birds eat it and they die. Oh. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna speed it up to get the last bit out. Isn't that great? I did not figure out that invention. Christy did. We were making ice cream one day and she mentioned about slowing it down. I said, hey, what an idea. What a concept. I think that's good for me. I'm good. Okay. I might as well. That's it. Easy, huh? That's it. I'll get it. You can check. Yeah, you turn it on. Yep. All right. Uh, what we've been doing, Chrissy, is bring it over here and scoop it. i got to find a scoop. Kay. I washed one. It's right here. The audience has been great. They've been staying in their seats. Here's the, the tub. Unless you want this one. Oh, it's close. Do we have more of the orange cups? Yes. You want more orange ones or you want the souffles? Souffles are right above your head. I guess the souffles are easier to use. Okay. If you'll start this, I'll get the tray. Mm -hmm. So, any questions on this flavor? Not until we get it. Pretty simple. <laughs> now, the only thing I would have done differently on this one is the trail mix is a little bit of dry. I would have somehow found a way to get it mixed in with some sugar. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I would do. Maybe uh, just spray a little bit of light water in there and uh, you know, spray it out on a, a, a surface, maybe a little bit of spray mist of water, and then sprinkle some sugar and leave it overnight. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we do with fruit. It's called sugaring the fruit. If you want to use fresh fruit. Uh, if you've had some time growing up, uh, some homemade ice cream and uh, someone made strawberry, it's like you got a rock. Thank you. You got a rock in there, that's the moisture. Um, and so the way you avoid that moisture content from turning into ice is you take your fruit uh, and you spread it all out on a cookie sheet and then sprinkle a, a light layer of um, sugar over it and let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. How many do I have? Um, I don't know. Let's see. No, one, I two, three, cup. four, five. I got millions of cups. Ten. But how many do I have here? Uh, one, Seven. two, three, four, five, six. And then don't forget Paula and Olga. And Minus one. Yeah? yeah. No? No. So like hmm? I'm done. You're done. You're cooked, huh? <laughs> you're, you're, you're cooked. 
it, it's, it's so funny. Every class, people are just no, no more ice cream. I can't take it. Paula. The biggest, uh, that's a 2012 or 24, and then the biggest is a 44. Yeah. Spoon. Oh, right here. There you go. Okay, if you'll pass these on down, grab one and pass them. Take a whole Sure. Yeah. I'll put this in the freezer for the moment. Yep. Um, you want me to go run this to Paula? Steve, would you like me to go run this to Paula real quick? Sure. This one's mine. So, Christy, as I said before, is our sales manager, also doubles at other jobs, as we all do. Everybody does everything. So if you have any questions, uh, you can speak to her or me. How's this one? What would you change on it? Everybody's so quiet. Don't you think it would be better if the fruit was sugared a little bit? Maybe the walnuts had some... In my opinion, it's good. But okay. People have different... Yes. 